In the past few months, Google has made a few real estate projects, including office space in the San Francisco Bay Area. On Monday, we learned the latest real estate expansion is much more ambitious. The tech giant just announced it's renting space from NASA. Joining us now to discuss Google's latest moonshot project is Dan Costa, editor-in-chief at PCMag.com. You know, Dan, Google's latest project is quite a long way off from its main money maker, literally and figuratively, which of course is search and advertising. Does Google actually need an airfield? Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. I actually think this has more to do with terrestrial real estate than outer space. Um, Google's a fast-growing company. It's going, and it, it needs the space, and there's just not that much space like this in Silicon Valley, so it's a good find just from a real estate deal. But, uh, you know, Google's got big projects. It's moonshot projects. It's doing self-driving cars. It's doing robotics investments. It's doing drone projects. And it wants to, to create a space program so it can actually connect uh, Internet access across the world. So those are products that you can't build in a cube farm. So it starts, when you have those ambitions, it really makes sense to have the space to carry them out. Hmm. And Google isn't the only Silicon Valley firm that's looking upwards. Is that right? Others have these ambitions, too. Yeah, it, it's curious. Uh, really, almost all of them do. Uh, just last Last week, Elon Musk announced that SpaceX, is going, which is really dedicated to the exploration of space, but they're going to launch up to 700 new satellites, so-called microsatellites, that will operate in an array that will provide very low-cost, low-power internet uh, to large swaths of, uh, of the planet that have never had internet before. So there are a lot of companies making these investments. Huh. Now, this seems to be a little bit more risky than just expanding real estate space here on Earth. I mean, what are the risks when private firms go into space? Yeah, there was actually, last week was really a bad week for private space exploration. We saw the Virgin Galactic uh, test flight that uh, crashed and uh, killing one of the pilots. And that was obviously not good news for the more than 700 people that have already paid to take that inaugural flight. Um, and we also saw Orbital Sciences in, in uh, Antares rocket, which is an older Russian-made rocket. That detonated shortly after takeoff. And uh, you know this is one of the risks that happen as the space program moves from private companies to NASA, which was very controlled, very safety-oriented. Uh, there's going to be more risks like this. There's always been risks in space flight. But uh, I just I don't see it going away, and none of these companies seem to be taking their pedal off the gas. Very, very interesting stuff. I know we're going to keep watching and keep looking up and see what happens down the road. Thank you so much, Dan, for joining us, and thank you all for watching. I'm Courtney Reagan. Have a great day.